But this is an opportunity for me to say some things that I normally don't get a chance to say with different ideas about the direction that we should take going forward. Sweden's Republicans have come down to being a party on of fiscal issues, on issues of taxation and spending. And I think that's vitally important. And, but I think we have to remember that this nation was founded on principles that don't really have to do so much with prosperity as they have to do with virtue. The founders of this country going from the days of the founders all the way to Ronald Reagan, spoke about a shining city on a hill that would be an example to the world. And they spoke that language, which was religious language, um, intentionally. It was a city, too. It's not a nation, necessarily. It's a community. It's people who are pulling together, who have a shared value and a shared vision. In such a society, in a society where people know one another, where they worship together, where they learn together, where they work together. Uh, in a community, uh, natural law has meaning. But natural law only exists when there's a collective mor mor morality. And when that collective morality goes, then the reign of egoism begins. And I think as Republicans, we have to be careful not to appeal simply to the egotistical desires for each of us to succeed, but to remember that we have to have a concern to move forward as a, as a, as a community and as a, as a nation full of communities. Um, the alternative to this, to having a community, is what I see happening to this country, which is all of us being reduced to kind of atomized individuals that don't belong to any a particular group, atomized to the point, if we listen to the left, that they don't have nationality, actual nation <coughs> identification. They don't have gender identification. They are simply um, individuals with nothing tying them together and nothing, um, nothing making them whole. But we have to recognize as a society that there are higher yearnings in human beings than simply maximizing profit. There's a yearning in the human soul to find a wholeness and to find a connection with the divinity which we all um, aspire towards and sense. And that's the reason that we have personal liberty, is so that we can find our way to that connection with divinity. But by building on what those who have gone before us have learned and accomplished, and as conservatives, we are the ones that stand up for the preservation and for the transmittal of those values from generation to generation. And we know how much the society has turned against that. That a university campus, and I love universities, I love education, I love teaching, but a university, universities have become almost a center of infection for bad ideas that have now gone out throughout our society and created tremendous problems for people personally. Um, maybe as damaging as anything is the deification of multiculturalism, which denies the fact that we have and we need to have a common culture that we all share. Without that common culture, we don't have a nation. Those are things that we need to stand up for that, that nobody else will. We have to remind people that that wonderful phrase E pluribus unum, out of many, one, which is the motto of this nation, um, is the only way that we can succeed as a nation. Each of us bringing all of what we are, our backgrounds, our heritage, and everything else, into one common pursuit. We need to stand for values that address these deeper human desires for stability, for community, for spiritual fulfillment. And I think when we speak in those terms, we're not speaking about left and right. We're speaking about what is most human and what it is our obligation to speak of. The alternative to that sort of vision of how we succeed as Republicans is what I call the spectrum theory. And the spectrum theory holds that politics is about an arrangement of people from left to right on a spectrum. And that the way that you win an election is to be closer to the center of gravity within your district than anybody else. But the people that are in the middle, the swing voters,
voters. The swing voters are people that do not have an ideological identification of their own. That's why you had people that were um, Bernie Sanders supporters that ended up voting for Trump. That doesn't make sense if you view people on a spectrum, but it makes sense if you view people as yearning for something different from what the parties is presented to them. What I don't think works is to chase them to the left as they move to the left. And then the alternative to this is what I would call the conversion theory, which is to say we've got to make more people Republicans. We can't go chasing them as they run away from them. We have to have a message that turns, that stops them and brings them back our way. Um, we've got to find people who are Republicans and don't know it. And we know there are many, many of those people in the cities. When we talk about going into the cities, I think we make a mistake in thinking that we have to move left to go into the cities. We have to raise a standard that people will respond to when we go into the cities. You know, um, principle is one of the most attractive things that we can offer in politics. That's what people consciously want to see in politicians, are people who stand for something. Um, and if we get them on principle, we have them forever. Uh, it's a higher appeal. It's an appeal to the heart and to the soul. They are noble when they attempt to persuade people instead of pandering to them. And we know by instinct, we know in our hearts, that victory goes to those who are forthright and gallant, not to the cowardly. And I said, I think the thing that makes something that's so conservative is me and Rob Sampson. You have to remember, if I, I say sometimes to people that if you took the whole state and set, uh, put it through a blender, what would come out would be pretty much Southington. It's about as average a place as you can find. And it's also a place, incidentally, that voted for um, Al Gore, uh, John Kerry, Obama twice. Um, it's not... It's not a town that has necessarily had a conservative voting record, but um, I won a seat in 2010 that had been held previously by Chris Murphy. Not because I tried to present myself as a, as a new version of Chris Murphy, but because I was clear about what I stood for and I ran a good campaign, which incidentally is something that has nothing to do with your ideology. That's simply a, a, a functional uh, thing. Rob and I had the good fortune of being elected together, and we had eight years to try to preach the gospel of conservative principles in the town of Southington. And we did it every way we could, in many, many town meetings, in, um, in op-eds in the newspaper, in the videos that I did back to the district, uh, all sorts of coffee hours, meeting people in their homes, every way we could do it. And we did it without rancor, we did it without demonizing our enemies, we did it without demonizing anyone in the party. I think if you have a noble cause, the way to promote it is by noble means. We need to train campaign managers. This is one of the greatest weaknesses that we have right now. Um, and the, for the statewide level, certainly, but even more at the legislative level. We need people that know how to run legislative races. And the last thing I'll say is that we need to strengthen ourselves personally in order to be effective messengers and in order to be servants of the message that we believe in. We have to educate ourselves. We have to improve ourselves. I think that um, virtue is another word like a lot of them that has gone out of uh, fashion. And virtue in the political world is maybe a word that one would almost never use. But again, I'll, I'll, I'll mention Rob one last time. What great pleasure that we've had together is going to Boy Scout Courts of Honor. And I was a Boy Scout myself, and I never go there without thinking of um, the Scout Law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Once that gets drummed into you... <laughs> But I, but I thought many times how happy I am that I've had those adjectives um, to hold on to in my life and to try to remember the things that I can aspire to myself. We have to never give up in the work that we're doing because nobody else can get it done. It has fallen to us to carry out this mission.
the people who believe in the principles of the Republican Party, the only principles that can restore this state and the only principles that can save this country. Those principles are true, and they are powerful, and we should be honored to be able to stand up for them.